In this video, I'm going to show you an absolutely incredible, insane game played by world's number one, Magnus Carlsen. He's playing with the white pieces against a Polish grandmaster with the name Gregors Nasuta. And the game is played online on chess.com in Title Tuesday. And we know that whenever Magnus is playing online. He likes to experiment with his openings. He's trying out new things, crazy things, bad things, totally rubbish openings. And for this occasion, he's playing with the white pieces. He goes for the move 1g4. And this is considered to be one of the worst possible moves for white at the very start, because you're not trying to fight for the control over the center. So that's not what you're supposed to do in the game of chess. But still, Magnus has some very interesting and new idea. Let's see what's happening in this game. Black played here the move d5, which is a very logical move because you're placing a pawn in the center and you're attacking the pawn on g4. Now, whenever players are playing this system, the group, they usually continue here with the move bishop g2. It's a pawn sacrifice. After bishop takes g4, white's idea is to play the move c4 and put a lot of pressure on this diagonal because if the pawn from d5 is moving away. If it advances or takes the pawn on c4, white is able to take with the bishop on b7. Now this is a tricky system and still I don't think it's particularly good for uh, white, but it's good to know this. Let's go back because now on move two, instead of placing the bishop on g2, Magnus has a new idea. It has only been played in a few games by some weaker players, but it has never been tried out at the highest level. Look what Magnus played here. He just played the move e4. That's what he should have done on move one. But now he's placing the pawn here on e4 and black can just take it. D takes e4. That is just a pawn for free and you have placed your pawn on g4. It looks incredibly ugly. But what has Magnus in mind? Let's figure out. He goes for the move knight c3. So the idea is that anytime soon you can try to regain the pawn by recapturing with the knight on e4. So if black tries to defend the pawn, for instance, play here the move knight f6, I guess that Magnus, his idea was to play here the move g5. To hit the knight, if the knight goes away, you can try to regain the pawn very soon. So there is at least some idea behind this absolutely unusual way of playing for white. But instead of protecting the pawn with the knight coming to f6, Nasuta played here the move e5, which is absolutely a very nice move. You're just placing your second pawn in the center and the minor pieces of black, they are ready to get developed. Now, still, you can take the pawn on e4 with, with your knight, but then, okay, after something like knight f6, I think black is just having a very good, comfortable, easy game. So that is not what Magnus wants to do. But now, maybe even more shocking than what he has been doing on the first three moves, look at his next move. He goes for this move, h4. He's playing another pawn move at the flank. And that looks absolutely insane because it seems as if it's not really contributing to the um, idea of completing your uh, development. So black continues here with knight c6. White goes for the move bishop g2. So also the bishop is uh, targeting the pawn on uh, e4. And here, I think black has different ways of handling this position. Goes for the move h5. And Masuta has a very clear idea in mind. He wants to get rid of that pawn on g4. So if the pawn advances to g5, I think the idea is to get the bishop to g4 to attack the queen as the pawn on h5 nicely supports the bishop. I mean, black can not win the queen. There are still ways for uh, white to defend against the threat, for instance, by dropping with a knight to e2. But it's a very unpleasant position. Therefore, Magnus instead instead of uh, advancing the pawn, he just decides here to take on h5. And I think now this is the moment, in fact, to continue developing with a move like knight f6. And with a knight on f6, you're no longer getting bothered by the pawn advancing from g4 to g5. So the knight is absolutely stable there. But instead, Nasuta had a different idea in mind. Instead of defending with a knight the pawn on e4, he plays here the move f5. So he really wants to stick to the pawn, not give white any longer the opportunity to win that pawn back. But now look what Magnus had in mind. He knows that it's, it's kind of a shaky position, but he needs to try to complete his development as quickly as he can. So he's challenging the pawn on e4 with this move d3, which is an excellent move because now 
you're about to bring your bishop into the game. And of course, your idea is also to take the pawn on e4. So black goes for the most principled response by taking the pawn on d3. And rather than taking back on d3, white first brings out the bishop to g5, attacking the queen on d8. That's an excellent move. Now, there are different ways. You can move the queen away. You can try to interfere with the piece. I should first point out that the intermediate move, pawn takes c2, now both queens are under threat, can just be refuted by this move. Bishop takes the knight on c6 with check. You're eliminating the defender of the queen on d8. Now, after capturing with check, you take back and there is queen takes d8. You're winning the queen. That's just game over. So there's no time to win another pawn with this nice uh, little intermezzo. Now, instead, the move bishop e7 was played. I think very logical move, offering the exchange of uh, pieces. And Magnus decides here to take first on d3. Looks like a very logical move. Ugly pawn on uh, d3. And now here, the move bishop takes bishop was played. But it should be mentioned that moves like knight b4, they're kind of annoying to face because how are you going to defend that pawn on um, on d3 and therefore i think instead of taking the pawn on uh, d3 immediately maybe it would have made sense here to take first with the bishop on c6 and then after b takes c6 take the pawn on d3 anyway let's see what happened pawn takes d3 black didn't play knight before but went for the move bishop takes g5 and here correct decision by magnus he trades off his beautiful bishop for that knight on c6 in order to ruin the pawn structure on the queen side. Now, after taking back by black, pawn takes g5, black captures the pawn on g5, and Magnus brings out the knight to f3 with tempo, hitting the queen on g5. The queen goes back to e7, and now it's queen a4. You can see that with the last two moves, White is just seizing the initiative, bringing the knight with tempo into the game. The queen also joins now the attack, threatening to take the pawn on c6. And then it's a double attack against the king and the rook. And now very important moment because white is in fact already taking over now. And um, in the game there followed the move bishop to d7. But after castling queenside, all of a sudden it's white's king who's absolutely safe. Now the rooks are connected. And the big question is, what is black going to do with his king? The problem is that you don't really ever want to castle kingside because the files are already open. It will be easy for white to, uh, to develop some play on that wing. While if you castle queenside, let's do it here, there's queen takes a7, the pawn can be captured. And then it's uh, queen a8 with a huge mating threat. So let's go back one move. Instead of playing bishop d7, maybe the bishop is better placed on b7. But okay, it's a blitz game. It's not so easy to figure out all these uh, consequences. Now, after castling queenside, black has actually the possibility to castle queenside here as well. Now, at least queen takes pawn will not come with such devastating uh, effect. Um, in fact, maybe even better for white is not to take the pawn uh, yet. Just one uh, second, sorry. Instead of taking the pawn on um, a7... You can also play something like rook h e1 and you're aiming for nice play in the center, hitting the pawn on e5 and perhaps at some point the pawn on a7 can be, uh, can be captured. But it looks very, very dangerous for black already. Let's see what happened. After bishop d7, castling queenside, as, uh, as we said, here uh, black went for the move c5 to attack the queen on a4. But the queen is happy coming into uh, to c4 keeping control over this uh, diagonal. And uh, also it keeps an eye on the other diagonal in case black is going to castle at some point. Let's say if you castle here, castling queenside, there is rook h2 e1. And this looks uh, very nice for, uh, for white as the pawn on e5 is in, uh, is in big trouble. White's pieces are working harmoniously together. So instead, after uh, queen c4, Nasuta played this move, bishop c6. And maybe he was thinking that he is uh, winning material here because the knight on f3, if it goes away, the rook on h1 is hanging. But look at this. They're full out. Knight takes e5, opening up the position with the point that if you take that knight, there's rook h2 e1 
with a big threat against the queen, thanks to the skewer. And there's not really a possibility here to, to defend. I mean, you can try still to interfere with the bishop closing the e-file. And after d takes e4, white threatens to take the pawn. If you play f4, then, okay, the e-file remains closed. But the other pieces are joining the, uh, the attack very soon. Pressure against the queen, against the pawn. The king is still in the middle. It's really bad for, uh, for black. So instead of taking that uh, knight on uh, e5, Nasuta decided to take on h1. Just a full rook. And if you do take on h1, then queen takes e5 is possible, when rook e1 is no longer possible. You need a second rook in order to get a rook to e1. But Magnus has calculated deeper. He played here the move knight to g6 with a knight fork against the queen and the rook. Very nice. Queen to g5, counter check, but now white has the move f4, attacking the queen on g5. The queen captures the pawn on h5. And now, of course, if you take on h8, black is still in time to recapture with the queen. And I mean, it's still a shaky position, but black is a piece up and there is no immediate way for uh, white to win the game. But as so often, and especially in this game, we have seen it already on a couple of uh, occasions, you're not interested in the material. The main priority for white now is to uh, start attacking the uh, black king. And with the move queen to e6, you see that the king is in, uh, in huge trouble. The rook on h8 is absolutely irrelevant. King d8 played. And now white goes for the move d4. Beautiful idea. You could have taken the rook, but white's main plan is just to open the d-file so that the rook is giving check and that will be in fact checkmate as the king can't go anywhere. So the big threat is to take the pawn on c5. Therefore black, black's only move here is to play the move c4. And uh, the, the file remains closed, but there is now knight to e5. Very good move so that you're threatening checkmate in one on d7. And by the way, there's also a threat like, like knight f7, for instance. Knight f6 played, you can already play knight f7 when black will be forced to give up its queen, but much stronger and faster is here to play the move uh, d5, which is a beautiful idea because you're closing off the diagonal. The bishop is no longer working in defense. And by playing this move d5, you're preparing the move knight c6 with checkmate. As simple as that. I mean, you cannot protect the square um, in a uh, convenient uh, way. Let's say if you play queen e8, it's just knight c6 check. And if you do give up the queen, it's pawn takes c6 with checkmate to, uh, to follow. I mean, the only way you can continue the game, but that's not what Nasuta wanted to do. He played here the move, uh, he resigned, but he could have played the move c6, but that is just completely uh, lost. I mean, let me show you one line and probably the players didn't calculate it, but it's what you... To, uh, can can rely on here as uh, as white. You can just go after the king. The knights are coming into the attack. The queen is there. After king b6, the knight goes away to e5 with a discovered check. You can just sacrifice the knight and you chase the king. And uh, the king is in fact caught in a, in a mating net. For instance, uh, knight takes c4, check. King goes to b4. You give another check with your pawn. The king goes to b3. Then you give a knight check on d2. Only move here is king to a2, but then queen c4 check. And you can even deliver checkmate at the other side of the board. One cute finish is knight b3, king a2, knight d4 check. Once again, king a1 and knight c2, beautiful checkmate. But there were many other ways to convert this game. It's all about this insane opening played by Magnus Carlsen. This move d5, very spectacular. But apart from his first few moves, he played with some very nice understanding, as always. I mean, that's why you're world's number one. But I was very impressed that after such a rubbish opening, let's put it straight like uh, that, that there's no misunderstanding. This is something you should not try yourself. But after this opening, Magnus just very nicely brought its pieces into the game, not caring about an extra pawn or piece, but just sensing the importance of uh, trying to catch the king. In the middle of the board. Let me know in the comments what you think of this game and uh, would you like to see more games covered by Magnus Carlsen from Title Tuesday or anything else? Please let me know and make me one favor if you can. Just click the subscribe button. Thanks for doing that. I'll see you soon again.